moths. You see them everywhere. You're looking at one right now. For how common these little insects are, you may be surprised by the stories and myths they bear on their papery wings. Some experts believe they've lived on the planet for 190 million years, older than butterflies and even some dinosaurs. These ancient creatures embody the ideas and aspects of cultures across the globe, and I want to share some of what I found with you today. So sit back, grab yourself a cup of tea, and take flight into the night with me. So first, let's dispel some misconceptions. You probably associate butterflies with the day and moths at night, but there's actually plenty of diurnal, meaning active during the day, moths that you can find just about anywhere. You've probably also heard that moths will eat clothes or books or sometimes even your money. I'm sure you've seen the bit with a wallet that's empty with moths flying out of it. But moths themselves don't actually eat these things. It's actually their larvae, and that's only a few of them. There are a few specific species of cloth-eating moth that will eat fabrics and cotton, but that's not actually the majority of them. In fact, there are many moth species that don't even have mouths. Their sole purpose is to mate within their very short lifespans of only a few days to a few weeks. I haven't died yet, so I'm assuming I'm not in that camp. So if you see any moths in your home, don't be too concerned about them destroying anything. They're probably not even going to be there for very long. Next, we can look at some common behaviors you see among moths. Most notably, their attraction to light. The leading theory is that this is because they use the moon to navigate but we're not 100% sure why they are attracted to light. Still, it makes for a very interesting story, and it has a lot of parallels to the myth of Icarus, the young boy who flew too close to the sun and whose waxen wings melted, resulting in his death. You can take this as a double-edged sword. A moth's attraction to light could be compared to searching for inspiration or enlightenment within the bright flame, or it could be compared to an obsession that drives one to self-destruction. But not only do their behaviors impact their stories, but the appearance does as well. Moths come in all shapes and colors, but the most common ones we see referenced in mythology are black, white, and brown. White moths, according to Appalachian folklore, meant that a person's ancestors were present so one had to be very careful when dealing with them, so as not to anger the deceased. Black moths have a more complicated symbolism, and it's not always clear, admittedly. Most of the associations are linked to death and misfortune, often represented in the Central Americas by a black moth's presence indicating that someone in the house, especially if they were ill, was destined to die. Some of the texts I found in the archive mentioned that they're also associated with divinity and universal secrets, but I can't really find anything on that. The closest thing I found was that in the Bahamas, black moths are sometimes called money moths, and if they land on your door and stay there for a while, it's supposed that you will win the lottery. I don't know where this comes from, but it's... Well, better than dying, I suppose. Brown moths embody the entropy and decay that is stereotypical of the moth image. There are a lot of brown moth species, which is probably why this is the most common sighting to see in your home. It's said that if you see a brown moth in your living space, that means that it's time to clean out, both literally and symbolically. This is probably because they're attracted to open food, or, I don't know, Asmongold's house. I wouldn't be caught dead there. Well, unless I was a rat. And finally, they're a message to be cautious about who you're letting into said house, and to be careful of who you are putting your trust in. Speaking of entropy and decay, we see mentions of moth in this vein in the Bible. There are three passages that mention moths, which often use them as synonyms for rot. 
The three passages are Matthew 6, 19-21, Do not lay up for yourselves treasures on earth, where moth and rust destroy, and where thieves break in and steal. But lay up for yourselves treasures in heaven, where neither moth nor rust destroys, and where thieves do not break in and steal. For where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. James 5, 1-3 Come now, you rich, weep and howl for the miseries that are coming upon you. Your riches have rotted, and your garments are moth-eaten. Your gold and silver have corroded, and their corrosion will be evidence against you, and will eat your flesh like fire. You have laid up treasure in the last days. And Job 13, 28 Man wastes away like a rotten thing, like a garment that is moth-eaten. We can see that the Bible uses moths as a way to communicate the impermanence of material, and that, like with many earthly possessions, they will all fall to the sands of time. Stepping out of the parables of the Bible and into more recent stories, there was one instance involving moths that showcased the adaptability that life holds of natural selection on display. In Britain, there is a species of moth known as the peppered moth, which are known for their white coloration with spots of black on them. There is a rare mutation that these moths have where they can come out completely black. However, this isn't very common, as predators are more easily able to see these black moths and, well, eat them. Meanwhile, the white moths blend in much better with the lichen that grows on the trees. However, in the 19th century, when the Industrial Revolution was at its height, these trees would get covered in soot, making them black and killing the lichen. This meant that the black coloration actually had an advantage, and the white coloration was the one that was more susceptible to predators. So because of this, the black coloration became the more dominant species, while the white coloration became less and less common. This adaptation came about so quickly because of the aforementioned short lifespan that moths have. This meant that mutations could come into effect a lot more quicker. It wasn't until about the mid-20th century that pollution controls sought to reduce the pollution levels to pre-industrial revolution levels, allowing the lichen to grow back onto the trees. Once this happened, the white coloration with black spots, the peppered moth got its name from, became common once again. However, because of this observed phenomenon, they got another nickname, Darwin's Moth. One could use this story to highlight another aspect that moths carry, their ability to disguise, another connection to moths and mystery. Speaking of named moths, there's another infamous moth that you've no doubt heard of, the Death's Head Hawk Moth named after the skull pattern seen on its back. There's actually three species of this moth, and their scientific names, Acherontia atropos, Styx, and Lachesis, all hearken to Greek entities or locations associated with fate and the afterlife. Acheron and Styx are rivers in Hades, and Atropos and Lachesis being two of the three fates. We can definitely see a through line of moths being associated with the afterlife, or as messengers, with some chthonic themes. Whether they be the souls of the deceased, or merely messengers indicating their presence. But this association with messages and death is even present in the modern myth of the moth, which I'm sure you're all familiar with, the Mothman. Most notably for our study, his appearance before natural disasters such as the collapse of the Silver Bridge, or the 1999 Russian apartment bombings. I could get into a whole story about him, but his is a story for another time. In summary, we can see that moths are associated with messages, death, and curiosity. I certainly hope that death is not in my cards, but I'm excited to relay messages to all of you, and I hope you enjoyed our lecture today. Take care.